Hello, I'm Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I'm going to do something interesting today. I have not looked at the latest rumor thing from the hockey writers. And I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to do it, like, cold, like, not knowing what's going on. Now, I've heard some stuff that's going on out there, but I'm not exactly sure what, it, what they're going to talk about. So we're going to go just pure reaction right off the top of my head. You tell me what you think about it. I'll probably look back and go, you know what? I should have thought about that more, but that's okay. <laughs> Anyways, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. I um, So we don't know exactly what we're going to get into. I did look at the title. I know we're going to be talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs, the San Jose Sharks, and I think it was the Chicago Blackhawks. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Go check it out, www.steelflyers.com. If you like the four major sports and some teams in those four major sports, we take care of all of that there. We do. So go look at it. Uh, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. I will be on today from 5.30 to 7.30 Eastern. Uh, we do basically what we're doing right now, except you guys can tell me about it in the comment sections or in the chat room, as they like to call it, as the kids like to call it today, the chat room. Anyways, yeah, and we, uh, we, we go back and forth and stuff like that, and sometimes we argue, and sometimes there's much frolic. Sometimes we do this. And wait till the end of the show, and I'll tell you about what the whole plan of this whole thing is, uh, and a little bit of frolic. Wait till the end of this video, I should say. Go right to the end, and we'll have a little bit of fun. All right. Let's go check out. Uh, i got to remember this. There you go. We see it. Okay. Let's look at the first one. Okay. I was right. It was the Blackhawks. I missed uh, the Avalanche. Okay. Uh, the Sharks want Kane gone. Oh, yes. All right. So... He's got, as they say, this is, by the way, Jim Parsons uh, from the Hockey Writers uh, website. Evander Kane has got himself in a lot of trouble. Now, I wanted us to talk about this a little bit. Man, it is amazing how much I hear people judging people. I don't know what the percentage of it is. I, it probably isn't a very high percentage of people that are just all over this, but there, I hear people, I see people on social media going, he is a scumbag and he is whatever. They, do you know the whole story here? I don't know the whole story. Um, I did talk about this on my live show and I said that because they talked about his ex-wife and he mentioned that she had, uh, she had mental, she had mental issues or whatever, you know, and I thought, well, that was kind of a, even if she does, it's kind of a jerk move to say that in the media like that. You know, just say, you know what, we're working on it or what have you. So it kind of, it kind of tells me that the heart maybe not be in the right place there. But even that doesn't tell the whole story. But yeah, we, we make, I'm not going to call him a, a dickwater or whatever. Um, I think Kane needs help, man. Like, think about it. He's been talked about gambling for a very long time, ever since he was back in Winnipeg. Uh, in Winnipeg, he had an issue where he went on social media after he got a whole bunch of money from his pay that he gets for being a hockey player. And he's, like, swimming in the, swimming in the money on social media and all that kind of stuff like that uh, and uh, being very immature. But obviously, you know, uh, from what I've seen, gamblers have a tendency to have this affinity with money, and they attach it to their, to their well, to who they are, to what makes them good, you know. So, and then he goes to Buffalo, and there was plenty of rumors there about him, his gambling and everything. And next thing you know, he's in San Jose, and it's not a rumor; he's going bankrupt. He was twenty-seven million dollars uh, in debt. And he's making $7 million a year. So put two and two together, man. I really just would help, hope you go get some help to, uh, you know, break this addiction if that's very well what it is. And it does look like it is. Uh, and that's my main concern for me anyways. Just 
want to see the dude get some help, man. I, that kind of activity, like when being like that, comes from a place usually that's not very healthy for any humans, and I imagine he's going through a lot. Um, but your wife's mental issue and health issues, breaking that out in the media like that, dude, it's not really that cool. And I know that you're probably upset by her attacking you, but is attacking her really much better? So whatever the case may be, you're, he's an extremely talented individual, 30 goal scorer in the league. You know, could be one of the best. He is one of the best wingers in the game when he's playing his game. So, but apparently, further than that, his own players want him gone in his own team. Like, this, there's a, I don't know if you guys ever played hockey, but there's a culture there where you are very accepting of your teammates, regardless if you necessarily agree with their lifestyle and all that sort of thing like that. The whole thing about being a team is that you're a team on the ice and team in the dressing room and you let all the rest of that go. For players to come out and say they don't want him back, things have gotten personal there in the room, I think. Uh, this is not cool. Like I said, I really hope he does need help, get help. But this, I mean, there's a lot of players out there that have been not fun to be around, I suppose, like uh, that leave certain organizations quite often over and over again uh, in the past. And uh, the one right now with uh, Max Domi, but it never came out in the open media. I want that guy out of the room. I mean, that's huge. And uh, so I don't know what's going to happen there because he's pretty much untradeable, right? Like I said, this is off the top of my head. How do you trade Kane now? Uh, I don't see a po I don't see a way that he's tradable here. He's making seven million dollars for the next four or five. Now I know people are going to say you know they want that goal scoring on their team, but it is a massive red flag when your own teammates want you out. Um, He's in a lot of hot water here. So I think the best thing for Kane would be go get some help, come back with a, a, a huge apology, uh, you know, hopefully from the heart, and maybe try this all over again. <laughs> That's uh, That would be the – several Sharks teammates don't want Evander Kane back on the team. That's Kevin Kurtz from The Athletic. So – that's uh, that's something right there. Okay, then we got the McKinnon deal, drill sergeant stuff here. Uh, apparently, this has been on Twitter like crazy, crazy. Uh, Zadaroff talking to reporters again. This is a Russian interview, so I I, I want to hear more about what happened here because usually, when a player does a Russian interview like this it gets sensationalized and there's something lost in the translation. He didn't really mean it to be that big of a deal, but it says that he, it said, he said Nate is like Michael Jordan. I don't want to make a direct comparison, but his way of thinking is very similar to MJ. He can be a jerk to his teammates. I'd really like to know if those are the exact words. You need to accept that, and it would improve you as a player as a result, you see, if you can't accept it while you're off the team. I will say this. It makes you wonder about the whole when Duchesne wanted out. Remember when Duchesne wanted out and, you know, McKinnon was coming in? McShane, Duchesne was kind of a leader of that team. Sounds like there might be a philosophy thing here going on between the two of them at the time. I'm just speculating here to a certain degree. But you can make an inference and a logical inference that that's possible. But it's funny what he says here. He says, if you can't accept it, you're off the team. Where's Duchesne now? He was supposed to be the leader of the Nashville Predators. And what is he now? He's like almost off the team again. So if you can deal with it, it's you're going to work out really well, maybe even more well as a whole player. 
Um, but apparently he's like totally anti-sugar. And I actually um, will tell you a little bit of a story of myself. I had arthritis in lots of areas of my body. Um, I had somebody, a uh, naturalist, say, try removing sugar from your diet. I started doing a keto diet in order to get my body off of being on glucose to get over the addiction, which I didn't realize was such a serious addiction. And I have no arthritis now. I don't eat sugar, consume sugar. I watch every product that I'm in. It's hidden everywhere, by the way. It's crazy. So I agree with McKinnon in this. I don't know if, if I would say it's a good idea to be all, all vigilant and sergeant about it, but uh, I guess that's the question there but apparently he gets like really mad when people bring sugar why are you eating sugar and all that kind of stuff like that and it's probably his way of showing that you're caring but quite often when you're acting like that it's not sometimes it's not really caring as much as just being controlling so that's a question is it controlling or is it not uh so McKinnon has a personal dietitian and chef at a cost of $150,000 a year. He's got a live in live in doctor physiotherapist, which he pays $1,000 each day. And he got rid of all soda desserts from the dressing room, eliminated white sauce and replaced the pasta with chickpea pasta because it's higher in protein. So he did that in the room. Now, was he doing this all vigilant? It, this is actually not a bad idea to do this, by the way, for your diet, uh, especially breads and all that kind of stuff like that. But uh, it's admirable to be demanding of, of yourself. But uh, where do you draw the line? Put it in the comment section. Where where do you draw the line? Can we not can we not help people with but let them make their own decisions at the same time? Apparently, another thing that came out with this was that he um would in practices and I, I don't know if it's in here no it isn't okay but there is you can check it out on other sites because i i think because i heard about this after i heard about this is that he like demands you to have it on the passes on tape and practice he won't even move his stick if it's off his stick he'll just turn around and go you got to hit it on the stick hit it on the stick hit it on the stick and I've seen it. I don't know if you noticed last year or maybe even the year before. There, he's lost his crap in. Uh, he's lost it during games and stuff like that, and had hissy fits, and looks like he's yelling at his teammates and all that. So, I don't know how that all affects, but I thought it was fairly interesting to bring up. What do you guys think about McKinnon and what he does? Do you think, you know, he's just being a good teammate, or do you think he should chill out a little bit? Uh, Okay, I haven't seen this one. Could the Blackhawks move out money? According, See, this is the first time I've read it. According to Pope, to Ben Pope, the Chicago Times, the Blackhawks have essentially thrown any rebuilding plans out. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense. They picked up Flurry, Seth Jones, McCabe. I, don't, I think that was their rebuild, rebuilding plan, by the way. Uh, they were rebuilding before. They said, were, they were, they said that they were rebuilding before they told anybody, and they were. Like, I don't know what anybody was thinking. Like, Taves came out and said, I didn't know what we were rebuilding. Nobody told me. And I was like, well, fire your agent, dude. It was obvious they were rebuilding. You guys are, they weren't grabbing any free agents. And these old, you know, the old players were just getting older. And the young players were not there yet. It was obvious that they didn't plan on making the playoffs. And they were just grabbing players like Doc and stuff like that. And now they feel that they've built enough through the organization by doing that. And it, by the way, it's a brilliant move because all these young players that they're grabbing like Doc and uh, uh, Debrinkat and all that get to see what it looks like to play for a championship. And I don't think Taves is stupid. A player's mindset is to win every year and that's all they're thinking until told otherwise. So they don't really look at roster structure and all that stuff like that we have guys i believe in my management team i'm going to go try to win and these young players get to see the veterans playing to win a cup and what it means and what it takes and how to act and all that kind of stuff like that so it's a little bit sneaky yeah sure but effective 
Anyways, they picked up Flurry, Seth Jones, and Jake McCabe, and they've got a solid team, and they could very well do some stuff this year, no doubt about it. Uh, but Brandon Hagel and Alex Nylander still need new contracts. General manager Stan Bowman will need to be creative uh, to fit in Flurry's $7 million cap hit. So the question is, are they going to trade off a few players to get some more cap room, especially for when they go into the trade deadline? And if they don't feel like they're not there yet, they may want to add. Uh, and yeah, that would, that would make sense to me. So Calvin DeHaan and Dylan Strom. Dylan Strom has been on the trade block forever. The guy just can't get his skating up. He just can't get his skating up, man. If he could, he could be a really good player. But he, he it was it was part of his draft. I remember when he was drafted, I was like, I wouldn't touch Dylan Strom. I, 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 I know a lot of teams think, well, okay, we're going to get their skating up. But it's a big if way up in the top five of a draft. Anyways. Uh, trading Calvin DeHaan um, or something of that nature. I could see Dylan Strom. I could see Dylan Strom. I don't think he'll get much for him right now because most people can see that his skating hasn't improved, but he can still put up 40, 50 points. Somebody like back to Anaheim or back to Arizona, maybe not, but uh, some team will have him fill in a role and you could get rid of him. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. The other option was to put, Connolly down into the minors, which would really suck for a veteran like Connolly, but they'll find a way to make room for sure. Now, oh, can the Maple Leafs afford Morgan Riley? That's a question. Uh, and that all comes on the heels of the aforementioned uh, Seth Jones, uh, Kale McCarr, Zach Wierenski, Dougie Hamilton and others uh, getting nine, nine and a half million dollars a year. So where do we put Morgan Riley at? Well, let's go look it up, shall we? At Toronto. Oh, look, I have Toronto right here. Morgan Riley. Let's look what he's put up lately. I don't believe off the top of my head that he really has had the most fantastic offensive numbers as of late. He had one great year where he was a... Yeah, it was 19, 18, 19. Can you guys see that all right? Or I got to move it over here. I got to move it over a bit. Uh, 18, 19, he had 72 points. And then 19, 20, 27 points. And then 2021, 35 and 55. So the 27 points would have had him as a 50-point guy. The 35 points and 55, about the same. So you got about a 50-point defenseman in the NHL, which is a valuable defenseman, no doubt about that. But are you putting him up with, uh, with that? Does that put him up in the sense of Jones uh, and all of those guys? I can't see that. I can't see that. Uh, Jones, at least perception anyways, Jones is big, huge, shutdown defenseman that can put up 40 points. Is uh, is Morgan Riley that? No, he's not a shutdown defenseman. He's not. I don't. He's not horrible defensively, but he's not great defensively. He's certainly not in Kale McCarr's uh, stratosphere. That's for sure. He, Kale McCarr just got nine million dollars a year. Is sick. I would say Zach Wierenski is a better defenseman than Morgan Riley overall, and Dougie Hamilton. So, can they afford Morgan Riley? I think he gets seven, seven and a half, somewhere around there. You tell me. Can they afford to do that? Can they afford not to do that? I mean, if they trade Morgan Riley away, they're basically just getting draft picks and they're going to have to go get another defenseman because they need a top four defenseman already. Ready. And who are you going to get for 7.5 better than Morgan Riley? I think they end up having to sign him and just keep on going the way they're going. I, I don't think you're going to get any, a defenseman like Morgan Riley back in return. If they make a Morgan Riley trade, it'll be a lesser defenseman than a pick or maybe no defenseman at all. And then they have to go get another sign, another defenseman that hopefully is better than Morgan Riley. What is your idea of Morgan Riley? Do you think he's a good defenseman, bad defenseman? Do you think he's worth $7.5 million a year? 
let me know. Um, again, I'm doing this off the top of my head. So if I take a good look at it, maybe I change my mind. But for now, right off the top of my head, I say they keep Morgan Riley. All right, that's my full 42. That was fun. I like doing this. I'm going to keep on doing it like this, I think. Right off the top of my head. Uh, go check out my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, oh, and uh, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I'm on, I do a live show from 3 to 5 Mountain Time today. On Today is Thursday. On Wednesday, or sorry, today is, what is today? Is today Thursday? I was supposed to do my show at night. I don't know. I messed up. <laughs> Anyways, 3 to 5 today. Uh, no, sorry. Tonight is, that's right, 7.30 to 9.30. I don't even know my own schedule. 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's 3 till 5 Eastern, or Mountain Time. 3 to 5 Eastern Time. Come join the live product. You can also catch me on TikTok at my NHL Pearls of Wisdom on TikTok or BPAL Picks on TikTok as well. And uh, I do the live show from there. Okay. Everybody else off you go. We're going to do some other stuff now. I got some letters from uh, uh, Tanisha Potts. Tanisha Potts from Louisville, Kentucky. Asking me, what color are my perlocopters? If you don't know, my perlocopters are, for those who subscribe, I send you my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace uh, by Helen. Helen knits them up for you and uh, sends it. We send them out with uh, Melissa or Hernandez in the perlocopter. Uh, we, have, we have now uh, two perlocopters. We're probably going to get another one. One of them is blue and pink, and the other one is gray and green, Tanisha. Thanks for asking. And uh, for that, I'm going to, for the, your letters, and send your letters. Guido goes down to the mailroom every day, and he gets the sack of letters, and he comes up just like that. Oh, you can't see me. Just wait. i got to show you. Comes up just like that. There you go. Comes up just like that. And then he pours it all over the letter table. We all do the perlo dance around the letters. And then somebody, usually Helen, she closes her eyes and then she digs through. And then we pull a letter out and we read it. And we do that all day. And then we find one that we like like that and we do the letters. So send your letters. But Tanisha, I have for you a green pearls for you. Green pearls. Helen just ground them up fresh this morning. So these are green pearls for you, Helen. All the way to Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Look at them go. Ooh, Ooh that was close. Just what knocked somebody off a skateboard there. They got little honing devices on them, so you don't even, they just go I just tell them, they spear, they go, off they go. So there you go, Tanisha. You got yourself some pearls. We got send your letters, put your comments in the comment section. And we're going to get ourselves a Jetto Frolic. Hit that subscribe. Tell a whole bunch of people we're going to get a Jetto Frolic. And we're all going to go to all the arenas in the land together. It's going to be so much fun. Eating chocolate and bacon, don't you know? Okay, that's my full 42. Till tomorrow. Have a great day. Okay. Bye.